Hey y'all and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Amber and I love all things handbag related with a little bit of emphasis on the brands Vera Bradley and Lug. I also occasionally, rarely, do some content related to concealed carry and how that works with all of these beautiful bags that I love. So if any of that sounds good to you, then stick around and let's hang out. So today's video is 100% just a little bit of good old fashioned fun. It's just for entertainment. Disclaimer, I mean, no offense toward anyone. As I said, this is just totally for fun. So this video I have titled my five dirty little Vera Bradley secrets. So essentially what I'm saying is five of the very popular opinions among the Vera Bradley community that I potentially maybe differ from just a little bit. Not necessarily that that's a good thing or a bad thing. It's just that in this community, there tends to be kind of a consensus among a few various different topics and things like that. And it's not that I disagree with them. It's just that maybe my opinion differs a little bit. So let's just get into it. I'm going to start at number five and I'm going to end with my number one dirty little Vera Bradley secret. So we'll start with probably the least offensive and work our way up to the most offensive or the most salacious, if you will. <laughs> and again, totally just for fun. I mean, no offense. This truly is just for fun. If you disagree with me, that is perfectly fine because I'm nobody anyway. I'm just some crazy lady on the internet. So let's get started, shall we? Okay. So my Dirty little Vera Bradley secret number five is I think that the Miller bag is better than the Vera tote. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so this is the Vera tote in pretty posies pink. I think let me take, let me make sure I said that right. Yes. Pretty posies pink. This is a bag that I hunted down forever and I still have not used because if you saw the video about that, then you know the whole conundrum around this bag, but I just haven't had the heart to use it yet, but I think it's absolutely stunning. This pattern is gorgeous. It is probably one of the prettiest patterns that Vera Bradley has ever done in my opinion, but this is the Vera tote. So it is just your traditional Vera. You have your slip pocket with your zip pocket on top of it. You have your hidden slip pocket at the top and then your six pockets that go around the interior of the bag and your two shoulder straps. Now the Miller bag is extremely similar to the Vera tote. This is the Miller bag in Bahama Bay blue. So again, you have that slip pocket with the zip pocket on top of it. You do not have a hidden slip pocket at the top of this one because your zipper goes all the way to the top of this one. But on the back, you have a slip pocket that has the zipper at the bottom. So if you want to undo that, you can make it a trolley sleeve, or if you prefer to have the slip pocket, then you just zip it back up and you have your slip pocket back. The straps on this one are the exact same, your two shoulder straps. Neither bag has a crossbody strap. And just like the Vera tote, this has six pockets that line the inside of the bag that goes all the way around the perimeter. So why do I think that the Miller bag is better than the Vera tote? It's not necessarily that I think it's better, but I prefer it more. So let me show you why. So in terms of a large tote, if I want a large tote, then clearly I'm trying to pack some stuff. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to pack some shiz around. The Vera tote is a gorgeous bag, but it ends up being more of a boxy shape. So if I can get this to lay flat, I will show you. 
forget it. It's been laying up there too long. I can't get it flat right now. But this one ends up more as an actual square shape. But it's more of a north-south design. Whereas it's not necessarily taller than it is wide. But because the dimensions are so proportional since the length and the height are so proportional. It, to me, comes across as more of a little bit, just a tiny bit of a north-south design. The base on this one, it does have a good base on it. You can get a good amount of stuff in it, but it's that north-south design that I'm not as crazy about. I prefer the Miller bag because it is more of an east-west design. So even though they are relatively very similar in height, the Miller bag clearly you can see is wider. So if I line them up on the very bottom, you can see how the Miller bag extends past the Vera tote. The other thing that I do like about the Miller bag as opposed to the Vera <clears throat> is with the Vera, your zipper at the top kind of comes together a bit because you have just the tiniest little recess and then your zipper is kind of like a flap that meets in the middle so that's really good in some situations it gives you a little bit more depth at the top but the zipper on the Miller bag goes all the way to the top you get every inch all the way up to the top of this bag. The other thing about the Miller bag that I really like is that it's a little deeper than the Vera tote. So you get more overall capacity inside the Miller bag than you do the Vera tote. You get those same awesome slip pockets all the way around the inside. Even though you don't have that hidden slip pocket at the top, you get the slip pocket on the back that has the little zipper so you can make it a trolley sleeve. I just prefer the Miller bag for a large tote instead of the Vera tote. Caveat being, they don't make this Miller tote anymore. Last year or the year before, they came out with one in Performance Twill, and it was in the Ecat Island um, pattern. But I don't use large to large totes a whole lot anymore. Clearly, you can see I haven't used either one of these because they still have the tags on them. But, you know, had I been a person that uses large totes a lot, then I probably would have gotten that Miller bag. Because as far as a large tote goes, the Miller bag takes the cake for me. So if this was still in production right now in... They came out with the Miller bag and the Vera tote in the exact same pattern or color or what have you. And I was given the option. I would take the Miller bag over the Vera tote every day. So my dirty little Vera Bradley secret number five is that I prefer the Miller bag over the Vera tote. Vera Bradley dirty little secret number four is... I actually like some of the recycled cotton. So, there's kind of this general consensus among the Vera Bradley community that Vera Bradley's going downhill. They've implemented this recycled cotton now. It's not the signature cotton anymore. And I 100% totally agree that the quilted patterned bags and even some of the solid regular handbags in the recycled cotton they're just not that great the fabric doesn't feel that great they feel much flimsier they've lost their finishing details that made them look more high-end and more expensive however i have grown an affinity toward the recycled cotton utility line I like these bags, the utility line in particular. This recycled cotton fabric, to me personally, feels better than the quilted recycled cotton or 
just the regular unquilted solid colors that come in the recycled cotton. This utility line, I know that part of this has to do with the fact that these bags are padded. I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but these bags have a decent little amount of padding to them. It's like they put extra batting in here in between the outside fabric and the interior lining. But it makes them feel nicer, way nicer than the quilted bags or just the regular solid unquilted recycled cotton bags. And when I wear these bags, this is the recycled cotton utility bucket crossbody. Um, I've shown y'all this one recently. This is in Galaxy Gray. And I've also shown y'all some of the recycled cotton utility crossbody bags that I have. I picked that one up in black and then the desert flower color. And then I've shown my utility backpacks that I've picked up as well. All of those that come in the utility line have this extra padding, this extra, I don't want to call it plushness because it's not that the fabric on the outside is so plushy, but I do think that this fabric on the outside feels better than the recycled cotton that gets quilted or that doesn't come from the utility line, if that makes sense. So I think that this fabric feels better. The utility the fabric on the utility line feels better than the rest of the recycled cotton. And I don't know why, but I do think it feels better. And like I said, I know that it has something to do with how padded this fabric is, but I find these bags extremely comfortable to wear. They just kind of sit against your body like a little pillow. And I know that with the utility line, the majority of these bags are solid colors. They're not visually as interesting or as rich looking or as expensive looking as the quilted pattern bags. But I wholeheartedly have found a place in my collection and my lifestyle for these utility bags. They're in the utility line because they are utilitarian type handbags. They don't have a lot of frills or thrills with them. They're just kind of bare bones functionality at its finest. Like this particular style has a slip pocket on the front that has its own room, its own gusset. So it makes it super functional. The same with this little magnetic snap pocket has its own gusset. So it's super functional. The back of it, there's nothing. So there's nothing in between you and just this kind of soft, smushy fabric. The inside, you have your traditional two slip, one zip, but it's just a really functional bag and the fabric feels good against my body. So my dirty little secret number four is that, yeah, I actually like some of the recycled cotton bags. My dirty little Vera Bradley secret number three is that Sometimes I think the factory outlet patterns blow the retail patterns out of the water. It is what it is. So I have a friend, a really good friend of mine, and she also enjoys Vera Bradley. Not to the extent that I do, but she enjoys it quite a lot. And her mindset has always been that retail is the best. You can't beat the retail patterns. You can't beat the retail bags. They are the top of the top. The factory outlet doesn't even come close. And I will admit 100% the factory outlet bags don't have the quality that the retail bags do. Generally speaking, the retail bags do have a better quality. They're a better material. They have the interior linings. They used to have more of the finishing details, which a lot of them are lacking now. But in general, if you put factory bag to retail bag, the retail generally is better quality. But, but if you look at that with the retail bags, especially if you compare the pricing, especially since the pricing has went up to the factory outlet bags, 
being much more inexpensive, you're getting what you pay for, right? If you pay for the retail bag, you kind of expect better quality. If you pay for the factory outlet bag, you kind of know that, that maybe it's going to be a little bit of a lesser quality bag. They're not bad bags by any means. They are still good quality bags. It's just that maybe the, the fabric isn't quite as thick. You're not going to get that interior pattern if you have a pattern on the outside. But regardless of all of that, sometimes I think the factory outlet patterns absolutely knock the retail patterns just out of the ballpark. So, I don't know if you all are like me, but I'll go through these phases where maybe Vera Bradley on the retail side has released a bunch of new patterns and I'm just not feeling them. I'm just not feeling very many of them. And then I can look at the factory outlet side and I'll be like, boom, 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 three of them in a row that I'm like, ah, oh, love it. Gotta have something in it. You know what I mean? And then sometimes it's the opposite. Sometimes there's not really a whole lot I'm interested in at the factory outlet and it's the retail side is killing it and they're doing great. But more often than not, over the last few years, I have noticed that during spring and summer, the retail side comes out with a couple of cute patterns, but the factory outlet side comes out with like five or six. So, perfect example. Recently, I picked up all of these. So, I picked up the Messenger Bag and Sunny Medallion. Or the Factory Outlet Messenger Bag and Sunny Medallion. The Factory Outlet Large on the Go in Peacock Garden. And this Ultralight Grand Cosmetic in Chrysanthemum Crush. Which I turned into a little bag. I did attach a chain to it just to see if I liked it as a little shoulder bag. I like it both ways. Shoulder bag, crossbody bag, whatever you, however you want to look at it. But these are all three recent factory outlet patterns. I absolutely love all three of these. Now there for a few months, the retail side just hadn't released a whole lot that I liked. They have released a few, you know, here very recently that I'm really, really loving. But just sometimes I think the factory outlet patterns are better, particularly in spring and summer. I've noticed that the factory outlet patterns tend to maybe be a, le a little bit less detailed or less intricate than the retail patterns. But I think that really works for spring and summer, right? During spring and summer, I want color and fun and whimsy and youthful and just something that just makes me feel good. And then in the winter, I love those darker tones with the more detailed and intricate patterns that are maybe not as fun and whimsical, but are more subtle and beautiful. And I tend to lean more toward retail in fall and winter because retail does really, really well with those more intricate and detailed patterns. Whereas on the factory side, they tend to be more fun and whimsical and useful and just playful. So my Vera Bradley dirty little secret number three is that sometimes I think the factory outlet patterns are way better than the retail patterns. All right, number two and number one is where I might start to offend some people. <laughs> but my number two dirty little Vera Bradley secret is that the trim doesn't tempt me. So what I mean when I say that is Kind of the consensus among the Vera Bradley community is that the trim on handbags is phenomenal. It's fantastic. It's one of those finishing details that everybody would like to see come back. So how I differ from that <clears throat> is that I think the trim on some of the bags is absolutely beautiful. Don't get me wrong. But trim does not make or break a bag for me. Trim has never made a bag for me, certainly. And it has never 
made me not want a bag either. It's a detail that I think can enhance the beauty of a pattern, but it's not a detail that will make me buy a pattern just to get the trim. So, for example, I pulled out my Viratote in Pirouette Pink. So, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous pattern. It's got those big pink and white flowers. It's on a black background. It's just a gorgeous pattern. And up at the top here, you have trim. And on this particular bag, the trim just follows the top perimeter of the bag. And it's just the large flowers, and they're kind of lined up and redundant around the handbag. <clears throat> The trim is pretty. It's super pretty. It's it's sweet. It's fun. But it doesn't make this bag for me. For me to like a pattern, I have to like the pattern as a whole. I can't look at the pattern and be like, oh, you know, the pattern's okay. But now that trim, that trim is gorgeous. And that makes the bag. And I'm going to get the bag now because I love the trim. I can't do that. If I can't step back, look at the pattern as a whole, and like the entire picture of what I'm seeing, then that pattern just isn't for me. So with the pirouette pink here, when we really look at it and I step back, you can see that it's a floral pattern. It has large flowers on it, but that trim up there at the top, that doesn't draw me in. That doesn't make me want the bag. I think it's a cute addition. I do think it enhances the look of the pattern, but it doesn't make the pattern for me. And there are some patterns that the trim is gorgeous on. Like, um, I cannot think of what that pattern is called to save my life right now. <clears throat> I'll put a picture of it right here. Lavender Meadow. Is that it? I think it's Lavender Meadow. That pattern is gorgeous gorgeous. It's a gorgeous pattern. And the trim on some of the bags, like the Vera Tote and the small Vera Tote, the trim on that is gorgeous too. But the trim for me doesn't make the bag, if that makes sense. I don't have to, <clears throat> I don't have to have the trim. I do think that it's a really nice addition and it can make a pattern look even better. But Essentially, what I'm saying is that the trim has never made the bag for me. I've never bought a bag for the trim. I have never felt like the trim was the part of the bag that was drawing me in so much that I had to have it. And I've never looked at a bag that didn't have trim and thought, oh, wow, you know, I wish that had trim because... If that had trim, then I would buy it and I would love it. If the bag doesn't have trim on it, then that's fine for me. I step back, I look at the pattern as a whole, and if I like it, then I'll buy it. And if I don't, then I don't buy it. Um, I know that the trim has a, a very strong history within the Vera Bradley brand. I know that it, you know, kind of harks back to their wallpapering days and things like that. And I love the history behind it. But that specific feature on a bag has just never been the thing that has drawn me in to make me want to purchase the bag, if that makes sense. As I said, I think it can be a beautiful feature that really enhances the overall pattern. But if I don't like the pattern as a whole without the trim, then the trim is not going to make me like it enough to purchase it. So the trim isn't what tempts me. And here is where everybody leaves me. <laughs> My dirty little Vera Bradley secret number one is that I don't care about the critters. <laughs> so I can already hear some of you like your eyes bulging out and you're looking at the screen going, what? <laughs> I don't care about the critters. I can't say I don't care about them completely because 
I did like the little hedgehog pattern, but they didn't really sit in anything I wanted. It was like a triple zip hipster, a small beer, tote, some cosmetics, and a zip ID. And I didn't want or need any of that. And then I also liked the little sloth pattern, the hanging around pattern. But again, they didn't really sit in anything that I wanted. Foxwood, when everybody went crazy over Foxwood, I have nothing in Foxwood, you guys. <laughs> that pattern, I think, is really pretty, but I'm not going to lie. I saw so much of it for so long that I think everybody kind of burnt me out on it before I could even like it. <laughs> But again, kind of like how I was talking about with the trim, the critters in a pattern don't make or break the bag for me. If I can't step back and look at the pattern as a whole and like the pattern as a whole, then the fact that it has a bird or a fox or a, a snail or whatever the critter may be is not enough to make me buy the, the bag or the pattern. So, for example, I pulled out my French Ditsy Large Cosmetic. So, this pattern has birds in it. But that is not why I bought this pattern. This is not, that's not why I like this pattern. I think the birds are extremely sweet in this pattern. I think they're very pretty. I do like them. But I would have liked this pattern with or without the birds either way. Because I like the pattern as a whole. So, when I look at this pattern from, you know, from here, I look at it as a whole. And I see the colors and I see the overall shapes in the pattern. And I'm either drawn to it or I'm not. So, if I was not drawn to this pattern overall, and then I got up close and saw that bird right there, that would not be enough to make me buy this bag had I not liked the overall pattern. And I know that there are some people that are just, you know, absolutely crazy over the critters. And if there is a pattern that has a, a little critter or a little animal in it, then they're on it like white on rice. You know what I mean? And that's great. If that is what drives your love for a pattern, excuse me, or a bag or whatever it may be, then absolutely get that bag, get that pattern. It doesn't matter what draws any of us to any of these patterns. If we like them, we like them and we have our own reasons for it. And that's totally fine. So all I'm saying is that the critters aren't the driving force for me when I get a pattern or don't get a pattern. It's just whether I like the pattern as a whole or not. But again, just like the trim, a critter has never made the bag for me or kept me from buying the bag. So, my dirty little Vera Bradley secret number one is that I don't care about the critters. <laughs> Another perfect example of not necessarily being pulled in by the critters is this blanket that I have right now. This is the Peacock Garden throw blanket from the factory outlet side and you can't see I don't think if I hold it up you can right there is the peacock in the pattern if this blanket did not have that peacock in there I wouldn't have cared I still would have got it because look at those colors those colors and those florals they're gorgeous and I got it because I like the overall pattern. I love the way this pattern looks. I love the colors in this pattern. I didn't get it because of the peacock. I think the peacock is cute. I like the peacock. I have nothing against the peacock. <laughs> it's just that the peacock is not the driving force for me with this pattern. So the critters just aren't the driving force for me. So again, my number one dirty little Vera Bradley secret that I am about positive everyone else disagrees with is that I don't care about the critters. So that's my video for today, you guys. My five dirty little Vera Bradley secrets. <laughs> so what are some of your dirty little Vera Bradley secrets? What is it that you 
maybe don't necessarily completely align with the rest of the community. It's totally fine. Nobody's going to judge you. I just put myself out there for everybody to criticize. <laughs> but that's okay. I hope that if nothing else, this video was just a little bit of entertainment for you today. I hope that, uh, you know, I hope I didn't pop any blood vessels or piss anybody off too bad because that really wasn't my intention. This was totally just for fun. So if you have any comments, questions, or, or if you just want to say hello or just chew me out, that's okay too. Leave me a comment down below. I love to chat with you guys. I love to hear your opinions. So until the next video, I will see you guys later. Bye guys.